I think we can all agree that Sofago should not have signed a Travis Scott's label Cactus Jack. And before everybody starts thinking that I'm hating, this is not a hate video whatsoever. I like Sofago. I actually don't even think that Travis Scott necessarily ruined Sofago, but he certainly is not like succeeding in building him up to what he was supposed to be i mean like when you're signed to a big artist like travis scott you would think that the potential is crazy like you're building up the next superstar because the expectation is that you're going to become the next travis scott but usually that just doesn't happen and i think a lot of artists are becoming weary of this nowadays that your limit is actually Travis Scott. Not necessarily that you are going to become them. Like that's not the bottom threshold. That is the top threshold because while they are the biggest artists on their own label or because they own the label, maybe they're not signed to their own label like that. They are the main priority. Like they are not really going to help you all too much, or at least that is the trend that's been going on. Not, not necessarily with like Opium and Cardi because they're really doing their thing. I'm not always trying to draw that comparison, but it is nice to get a frame of reference for someone who actually is doing it right. So with Travis Scott, I actually don't think it's Sofago's fault, at least entirely, because perhaps they could run things a little bit better. But when you're signed to Travis Scott and Cactus Jack and like have these major resources, you would think that Travis Scott would get more involved and, uh, you know, maybe even give him a feature or whatever. It probably doesn't take that much time. And I understand that he's taken Sofago to various fashion shows and they've taken pictures and whatever. But really, that doesn't do all too much, especially for Travis Scott's audience. Like, he has a more mainstream audience. Fans aren't really looking into, I, I don't know, like, newer talent that he signs. They're there for Travis Scott solely because they think he's cool. They, you know, the McDonald's club, the shoes, all of that. Like he's a huge superstar, but it's not like the same relationship as it is with Cardi. Whereas he, when he signs a new artist, like fans flock to them because they know Cardi's not really dropping. And I guess the same thing with Travis Scott too, but it's just a different relationship. Like Travis Scott really isn't putting on new artists all the time or isn't shifting the sound of the underground. I definitely think he has a different sound, but you know what I'm saying? Like the underground doesn't really follow Travis Scott's sound like they do Cardi, which is for better or worse. I mean, Travis Scott does make a ton of money in sponsorships, partnerships and whatnot, but just the co-sign from him really just does not help as much as I guess Sofago probably thought. I mean, it all started because Kourtney Kardashian played Sofago's music at some like pool party in early February of 2021. And so then rumors started sparking that he was signing to Travis Scott, which happened months later. But arguably, he already had momentum. If you check out his social blade, he was already gaining like, say, uh, 11,000 followers or something in January or sorry, December of 2020. And this is when Off The Map dropped, like the music video, which is originally when I found out about him too. We were on stream one day. And so then the next month in January, he doubled the followers to 21,000. And then the next month, 48,000. Now you can potentially attribute some of it to the speculation that he was signing to Travis Scott and whatever. But really, I mean, with the momentum of Off The Map, he really did not need Travis Scott whatsoever. And that's why I think he low-key should have just signed to a Columbia or like an Interscope or like a 300, like a, like a major record deal, but like by himself. Whereas he is the top dog of his own record label. He doesn't have to wait up on anybody to give him the feature or the go ahead to drop the album or song that he's trying. And, and perhaps he has that, but like, What's the point of being signed to Travis Scott if you're not going to get this involvement and help in the marketing or in your career whatsoever because you signed your life away to him? Like, he gets now a percentage of your deal, of your royalties, of your life, or whatever the deal is. I didn't see the contract. And likely, he didn't have to give you all too much money to do it. And also, he probably got a better percentage than what a regular record deal would be because how these record deals go or just negotiation in general is it's an exchange of value so what an interscope or columbia or like a record label has universal warner 
Sony. They have a lot of resources. They uh, have a lot of knowledge on how to blow up an artist and they have a lot of money. Whereas Travis Scott has all those things as well, but he also has the cosine, which has a lot of value in it, or at least that's what we thought because obviously it hasn't worked out as well as we predicted. But what that means is if Travis Scott signed Sofago, he likely did not have to give up as much money to Sofago as a regular record deal would be. Now, with signing to Travis, I know that Pink Hearts was distributed independently, meaning he did not go to a major record deal yet. And likely when he signs a major record deal or for distribution on the next project or whenever he happens to do that, he will get a bigger deal because he does have the backing of Travis Scott. But at the same time, I feel like he could have gotten that deal regardless. I mean, he's probably declined a little bit. I mean, if again, if we check out the social blade, he does lose followers like hundreds a day other than when he does post. So if he were to have just done a record deal without Travis Scott involved right after off the map, I'm sure he could have gotten M's and he's probably getting M's now, but then he wouldn't have someone else sticking their hand in his percentages, AKA Travis Scott, just because of the cosine, which again, really isn't doing much at all. I mean, the peak of his career thus far, it looks like, was the Lyrical Lemonade music video for Knock Knock. And arguably, again, that had nothing to do with Travis Scott. He gained off the momentum from Off the Map in December of 2020. And then it's led up to, let's see, May or June of 2021, which was when the music video dropped, as well as that song going viral on uh, TikTok as a trending sound. Like, what did Travis Scott really do? I'm not hating on Sofago. I'm actually hating on Travis Scott right now. He's basically getting money from Sofago's career without doing anything. And so it just sucks to see because I know all these memes about Sofago where like he's up next. He's on the up next uh, Apple Music playlist. Meanwhile, the quote tweets are he's been up since the Trump administration and we're already coming up on the the next presidential election y'all we're in 2023 we're coming up to a focal point where if these artists this newest generation of rappers if they're not going mainstream they're likely gonna stick in the underground and just their career is gonna die out and i'm sure you don't want that especially with the lifestyle that they got of spending so much money i don't know individually on specific artists how much they spend but it is the time where your career is definitely gonna make it or it's gonna break and to be honest, right now, I mean, I know we're waiting on Sofago's EP with 12 songs, but like the last one he just dropped with Didi Osama, the feature was completely unnecessary. I liked the Ye song by himself, but like why Didi Osama? If you wanna do something, just put freaking Travis Scott on it, bro. That's gonna blow up your career and get the hype for your EP in general. And then you're probably waiting on him to potentially put you on a feature on Utopia. But I honestly would not even be surprised if that doesn't happen. I know that everybody's expecting that because Don Tolliver was on Astroworld and that's how he blew up because it was a secret feature. He wasn't even listed on streaming platforms, but then it, people found out. But I don't know, man, I just have a weird feeling. And that weird feeling this comes from this overall waiting game that I feel like Sofago's going through because he signed to Travis Scott. Like he wants to get guidance from him, but Travis Scott really isn't guiding him through his career or the music industry whatsoever. They're kind of like in their own island. They have their own team. Whereas Travis Scott's really supposed to be involved. I mean, they have a business relationship, but in all reality, he literally just took a couple pictures with him at a couple of fashion shows and, and that's it. And his name is next to him on the like NBA All-Star Weekend performance and, and that's it. Like you don't think that Cardi is having little meetings or he's in the studio with Ken and Destroy Lonely giving him game like this is how you gotta move like post this story but like don't talk online unless it's in weird symbol you know what i'm saying or at least they follow by uh, example and they're all managed by the same people so they kind of have a cohesive game plan at all like i really don't think travis scott is associated with sofago whatsoever and so with that being said there just was literally no point to sign to him it was a great thought especially with Travis Scott's track record. He had Don Tolliver, who really did blow up, had like a number one song with Lemonade or Top 10, whatever it landed to. 
Shaq West, I believe also had a top 10 song with Mo Bamba. And so of course it probably looked like a an enticing deal from Travis Scott. I mean, you get the co-sign, you get a little bit of money from him, then you can sign a record deal. Yeah, you give up a percentage, but like, oh, I'm gonna be the next Don Tolliver or Shaq West or Travis Scott getting tens of millions of dollars, but it just hasn't worked out that way. And I think that this will be a learning lesson for all upcoming artists in the future but y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think was it a good decision to sign to travis scott i think we're gonna get a lot of overwhelming no's i mean it's pretty obvious but perhaps the fans blame him more than travis scott i mean he's still a kid i feel like travis scott really should be guiding him through everything or at least like imagine living with travis scott at least for like six months where you go to the studio with him every day you're flying to all these different cities you're meeting up with all the celebrities he knows i mean he's got children with kylie jenner and the kardashians you're at like triple a plus celebrity status bro i'm sure you could learn a lot on how to move like a celebrity where there's paparazzi taking pictures of you without you even saying anything online you become a superstar without even dropping music but with that being said it has been your boy bob and lamb signing off make sure to like and subscribe to the bob game if you win it peace out clap people you know what i'm saying